everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about favorite nail accessories, favorite nail tools. Today is all going to be about manis and pedis and the love of having the right tools. I'm also going to include some of my favorite colors that have been some of my favorite colors for a very long time to come. And if you're interested in them, of course, you are welcome to pick them up. I'll have links in the bottom bar. No, this video is not affiliated or sponsored with some of my favorite brands, but this video does contain a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Before you can really start to rock an amazing pedicure, you really need the tools. Having an awesome nail box. Having a shoe box, a container, glider container box full of all your favorite nail things is definitely the way to go. I really don't recommend having like a clear glass container of nail stuff sitting on top of your kitchen or your, your bathroom sink. It's just gnarly looking to some people to look at nail tools. So my recommendation is to have a nice little box in which you can store your favorite goodies in. Now, of course, nail implements are sharp and they will rip up a shoe box, so I highly recommend plastic, of course. But the very first thing I can highly recommend is having an awesome emery board. An emery board is going to help you shape, file, and even cut your toenails. With the right grit, right grade, you can do amazing shaping of your nails, especially good for manicures. You need something that can really buff and, sh and shape real well if you are into those um, trendy shaped uh, nails. Coffin nails, stiletto nails, whatever you call it. But for toenails especially, you want to file them straight across and make them all uniform. I still recommend getting a good, a good nail file. I recommend going to Sally's Beauty Supply and getting the pro ones. Um, some of the pro ones are very soft and squishy. Those are buffers. Um, that even come in a nail file form, but I do recommend getting the black solid ones. Um, nothing too sharp, of course, because you don't want to cut into your skin and, you know, create little jagged edges. So if it has like a little bit of a squishy padding right in about here, it's perfect because you don't want to cut your skin. The next tool I highly recommend is a cuticle pusher. Now, if you're dealing with cuticle pushing at home, you don't need anything abrasive. The majority of people actually do bleed if their cuticles are pushed a little too far down. So I do recommend just a little guy like this. He's perfect. Not only is he essential to doing a manicure because you don't have to do too much clipping of your own nails, but this little edge right here will help push them down safely and gently. Now, this is a cuticle cutter. This is not a toenail clipper. Now, they do sell toenail clippers that are like very wide, open mouth, and those are for people who have like horse's hoofs for nails. This is a cuticle nipper, and it opens about half an inch. This allows you to get around very thick, very full cuticles, but the majority of women really only need about a fourth of an inch. This is a half an inch. Having a couple different nail clippers, real good. This is great for a mani or little toes, and great for bigger toes, firmer toes, stronger toes. I really don't recommend bring, breaking these out unless you have a hard time filing your own toenails or they tend to tear when you file them. This is really helpful for helping you get straight and even across. So the next thing, I'm, of course, I'm gonna recommend after give, giving yourself a flawless pedicure, manicure, whatever, is to have a little nail brush. This is going to help smooth out and buff off any debris after giving yourself a mani or a pedi. And it might even help tear away cuticles that you were a little afraid to buff off with the clippers. People are afraid of these, so that could be useful for you too. Also having a very squishy nail buffer could be helpful in filing away any uh, dead cuticle. Using lotion, of course, is going to be helpful for that as well. It definitely helps to soften up your cuticles as best you can before you really start to chip and cut away. Now, the next thing I want to recommend here is the toe separators. These are toe stretchers. These are from Dana Dance, and, and they're basically yoga toe separators. You can use these for crooked toes, um, relax, stretch your toes. They are really nice to use for pedicure, but they also give you a little bit of a toe workout, so a lot of fun involved. And they do come in, um, they do come in a variety of colors, as you can see. What I like about these is that they're very flexible, so you can fully, fully, full-on 
stretch them out. If you have big feet, you're good to go. If you have small feet, these might pose a problem. Before you can really begin polishing, is having a couple things that can help break away or take away any um, take away any excess nail polish from around your cuticles when you're painting. Sometimes digging your thumbnail into the paint that got on the skin is a little yeah, no, it doesn't really work for everybody. So getting a nice orange wood stick. This one has a pointer you can use as a dotting tool, and this one you can swipe across your cuticle. Just load this up with nail polish remover, and you can swipe away any extra polish. Some people will just honestly lather paint all over their hands and their nails, or whatever, and just go to town with that and be like, you know, it's cool, the shower will take care of it. But you know, sometimes no, because when you swipe on that top coat, it really seals all of it down. So be prepared to lose more than just what's around your cuticles at any given time, if that's your strategy. The next thing in here I'm going to talk to you about is nail art kits. Parts and beads case, you can get it at Little Asian stores, Sanrio stores, uh, Tokyo stores, and it's basically a Daiso product. This is a Daiso product. And so basically what you're gonna do with this is store your extra little beads, your favorite gems, your nail tattoos and stickers. If you're not a nail artist, and by that I mean somebody who can paint flowers by hand, the stickers really can come in handy. And my, my place at work, we're so high volume, we don't really have time to do decals because they can take up to 15 to 30 minutes more per nail. So. This isn't the greatest sticker we would use. We would use something nicer from a pro store, but these are nice in a pinch. They're just little tattoos. So having a little nail kit to store your extra goodies in there. The nail, nail tools are actually very affordable if you get them on Amazon. So that's always, always a really good recommendation. And to anybody who says that taking off nail polish it takes too much time, get you one of these. This is Awesome, you can get this at Target. Nail pros use it. I'm actually a natural nail tech. I don't do acrylics. I do pedicures and manicures and spa hand treatments, spa feet treatments. So, but what you can do in here is get this at Target and it's a little pump and it pushes down. I don't wanna push it down because nail polish remover will just splatter up in my face and I'm over a wood desk. But you can just push that down with like a little orange wood stick, a little cotton ball and load up your favorite little piece of cotton and just plop that right on top of your nail polish to help remove it a little bit. So that's also really nice. And if, you, if you're not gonna use this cotton ball right away, you could just go like this, like that. Okay, so the cotton balls I really like are these. These are really good. Just these very basic, plain, cottony balls. <laughs> I don't like, um, I don't like the cheap kind that kind of remind you of Halloween spiderwebs because they just shred all over the place. These don't leave too much extra fuzz on your toenails and you get 200 for a couple dollars. Um, also, I forgot to mention what nail polish remover was in here. I just like to get the 100% pure acetone or I like to get the nail polish remover at Sally's. That is pro grade. It's stronger than um, getting a nail polish remover from the drugstore. That you will spend a year removing your nail polish with. So yeah, don't don't go there. Because even pro grade nail polish remover is a lot better than not using acetone or not using Dollar General's favorite nail polish remover. That stuff sucks. Uh, I just like the clear, basic, pure, and simple, but be sure to put in one of these so everyone knows it's not something to drink out of. Whew. All right, so the next things I want to mention are using a base coat and a top coat. This is an extremely overlooked product. Um, not only is the base coat extremely overlooked because everyone's like, well, why? Like, or why do my toes get stained? I've had so many people ask me, like, why are my toes stained and why are some people's not? And what's really funny is that there's a lot of pedicure shops out there manicure shops, nail shops, whatever, that don't even use a base coat. And what's really sad about this is that there's also a lot of nail techs that aren't licensed. So um, the sad part with this is that they're damaging people's nails in what looks like a very legal basis, on a very daily basis. Um, people are in numbers getting bad nail pedicures done because things aren't getting organized or cleaned and base coats aren't getting used. If you go to a nice nail salon, you should be getting a primer and a base coat. So base coats are so essential. Once, once that's all said and done, 
your nail color comes second with two coats. So you do one coat, go through all the toes with one coat, and then go through all the toes again with another coat. So you should let each toenail take a little bit of time before getting the next coat on there, and that way everything dries through completely within an hour. And then a nice quick dry top coat would be really nice with a high shine. That way your nails look fully finished and polished and cleaned up. You can even choose gel top coats, matte top coats. Just as long as the finished look has a polished look to it, it doesn't really matter what your desired nail effect is. Just be sure to seal the polish in so it doesn't chip. Now, the next thing I wanted to cover was nail care after you do all this. I do recommend putting a little bit of an argon oil over your toes simply because this will really help smooth out the cuticle and really help hydrate the nail. And with all the buffing, filing, and removing of the cuticle, sometimes the toes can look a little dry. And that's basically because you pulled away a lot of skin that you didn't really know you had until you really started just pulling and digging. And of course, taking away, taking the time to clean up your cuticles will really help also with ingrown toenails. And of course, just keeping them clean and hydrated. You don't have to get anything fancy. This argon oil is from Green Aesthetics. It is recommended for use on hair, skin, and nails. I've used it for everything but the kitchen sink. When I use this, I put this on my, around my cuticles after I've painted my nails, and it also helps kind of seal up the cuticle and allow the paint to dry faster. Just don't get anything, and any of this through the nail polish once you've put all that hard work and effort. Um, Zoya is my hands down favorite nail brand. The paint brushes are a little thin, so I do recommend getting the orange wood stick in case you do need to do quick little trips around the cuticle or the edges. So I really, really like for my manicure color, I really like Shea from Zoya. This is a nice pinky pearly uh, color. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, I really like to keep it soft and sweet on my nails. I don't know why I'm like that all of a sudden, but I feel because I have no nice natural nails anymore from always doing manicures and pedicures. I don't like to draw attention to my hands. So I have five pedicure shades that are absolutely to die for. The first one is Zoya Lotus. And this is a nice soft, sort of a blue-toned lavender or lilac, if you will, with a gold and pink shine to it. This has been one of my favorite for about two years now. Absolutely adore this as a pedicure color. It actually is nice as a manicure color, too, if you want a color. Now, the next one I want to talk about is an oldie but goodie. This is Kai, Zoya in Kai. And it is, it looks like a green in the bottle, but once you have it on, it almost looks like a chrome lavender and when it touches the sun a little bit it looks like a kind of like a, a little bit of a green with a little bit of a chrome metal shine to it it's a lot of fun to wear and a lot of people just don't know what to do with themselves when it comes to a dual chrome i just recently rediscovered this color as well it's on my toes right now and i had just taken off one of my favorites zoya gem which is a ruby color with a lot of different variations of pearl in it. This color just reminds me of totally outrageous 80s gem, rocker chic. This is like the color for star earrings. I love that color. But this color especially is a true duochrome and it only it has like a pink, uh, pink, like a pink dazzle to it. It goes on as smoothly and easily as a cream finish. But because of that dazzle, it actually is a little bit more forgiving in terms of your brush strokes. Sometimes the creams are not very forgiving in terms of brush strokes. So I tend to like the ones with a little bit of an iridescent pearl and I just realized now sitting here that every single polish that is a favorite of mine has a pearl or a sheen to it. I tell people everywhere I go that I love colors with sheens to them just because it brings something extra to it, but I don't necessarily like glitter nail polishes. I like cream products or matte products that have a high sheen to it just for that something extra and just so that the product creates a dimension uh, or lays nicely, if you will. So I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of just straight glitter, if that makes any sense. So gem we already went through, my all-time favorite color. And of course I have two more options. And I'm really sorry that all these options are very fall-like, but those, I tend to like dark toenails. So the last really dark color before I go to my one color is Zoya Storm. This is gorgeous. It is a black with rainbow glitter. It looks great with everything. And when I say glitter, it just I just mean like it's literally shine, sparkle effects in every single little coat you put on. But it actually goes on like an iridescent pearl, so it's not hard to remove. 
um, but it goes with everything because this is rainbow pearl basically so if you're somebody who doesn't mind stepping out of the box and putting on black this is a fun one because um, it's not a matte black and you can even put a matte top coat on there I bet that would be fun too if you're a little edgy a little edgy real fun the next one I want to talk about on the last is the Zoya Pixie Dust Nail Lacquer. Truth be told, I love Pixie Dust Nail Lacquers. I have, I have bright colors from the Pixie Dust line. I got holiday colors from the Pixie Dust line. And I think I left a couple of my ruby colors in, in California. But I got a pro discount, so I'll just have to rebuy those. I think I left Noir and... Yeah, I left some fun things. I don't even know how that happened. But I left some, um, I do have Godiva, Destiny, and one of the reds with me at the moment in my, in my position. So I really like this because it's like a ruby coral, and I think I accidentally rebought it with the Julie G line, but that's okay, I love this color. What's really cool about this is that it is longer wearing because it is so heavily textured, all the whilst having a really fun look to it, a really fun texture. And I really feel a matte top coat brings out the best in this to maintain that texture. Um, I also really like that there's sort of an identifying lid. You know that this is a funnier texture and this is a regular one because the lid is the lid is basically plastic and this is like a rubber grip. There's so many fun pixie dust, um, so many fun things in the pixie dust line. The only con with these is that they're hard to remove like a traditional glitter, but that's why you're going to get you some acetone for your glitters and a bottle of pro gray nail polish remover from Sally's and you can, you can do that and this will come uh, right off. It is longer wearing textured nail polishes are usually longer wearing so if you're gonna go to the beach then is a real fun time to bust out the textures because a lot of people are really afraid to put textured nail polishes on because they either don't like the feel or they don't like the look and then it's like mm, okay so they usually stick with what they know at the beach which might be a neutral but it's like come on you're on vacation you're on vacation so you gotta have fun I highly recommend having fun. And you can even put a classic, regular basic quick drying high shine top coat on this. You won't even feel the texture. You'll just have that effect. And trust me, it glistens, it glitters like the moon in the sun. All right. So I like my, I honestly, even though they're all shines and shimmers, I like my recommendations because I feel like they're longer wearing it. Who wants to bend over and paint their toes every two weeks? I don't. So I, I fully stand by my selection. Of course, these are breathable vegan, vanilla free, free, and all the other good stuff. So check it out. I'll put a link for soy in the bottom bar. I'm gonna have a giveaway for the argon oil. So please comment below. Any comment below at all if you are interested and you are from the U.S. of A. These are the giveaways are only gonna be shipped from the U.S. of A. because the cost of shipping outside is ninety dollars, and this product is not worth ninety dollars. That's really all there is to it. It's not to discriminate. I have a lot of people viewing me from other countries, and I thank you for it because without you, without you, I'd be talking to myself in a room. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, I'll have a giveaway for that going on now. Ready, set, go, comment below, and it'll be over in a week from the date of this post. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video. I'm going to have some awesome stuff coming right up because it is the holiday season. It's coming closer to the holiday season. And be sure to check out my vlog channel, which is also now going to be affiliated with affiliated and sponsored or whatever you want to call it with broadband tv they're going to be my partnership there you go partner that was the word i was looking for partnership broadband tv is going to be partnering with me for my videos on both my vlog and here and they have been the first network to offer me that as well as epoxy endless amounts of music um and just a new venture here in the world of youtube it really is nice to be able to come on here and enjoy talking to you guys do my own thing have my own creative outlet all the whilst being able to make a little extra money and in order to do that i don't want to sell out and do reviews of stuff i hate or do videos i can't stand by so it is nice to have a partnership that allows me to be creative so that i can basically help fund my channel through them and I've honestly pretty much every put every single dollar back into my channel. I think there's only one time in my life I ever paid a bill with a YouTube paycheck and uh, it sucked. I, I definitely want to put my money back into my channel because I love beauty. So yes, yes. Uh, I'm thankful for you guys and I'll see you guys next time.